Collaborative learning activities provide students with in-class opportunities to observe and learn from each other. Let's see how Lauren facilitates cooperative learning in a health and safety course with student teams using a shared OneDrive document. So as we discussed in the first part of our class meeting, um, we had an excellent day of learning yesterday in the lab, and we're gonna be continuing our conversation about spa safety for the rest of class today. And we're gonna be focusing especially on how viruses, bacteria, and pathogens are transmitted. So some of this will be a bit of a review for folks. Uh, this is based on chapter five of your textbook, um, but, here we are, we're going to be focusing on different modes of transmission. And I'm just going to review quickly what this means. Um, and then you're going to do a bit of a collaborative document where I can see what's kind of what's remained with you after our discussion in the lab yesterday, what stuck with you after reading in the textbook, and then we'll come back and we'll share as a bigger group. So essentially, we know already that pathogens are different in terms of where they reside and how they infect humans. And bacteria, viruses, and fungi have different ways of moving from one person to another or from an object to a person, right? So here we're thinking about different types of transmission. And transmission is the process by which these pathogens move between individuals and objects. This is essentially how we get sick. So there are um, different types, of course. And merely being exposed does not necessarily make you sick, as your immune system might be able to fight against it. However, transmission is the necessary first step. So we wanna to try to prevent transmission in the first place to help prevent illness for ourselves and of course for our customers. So in chapter five and yesterday in class, we discussed the different types. So we've got direct, indirect, airborne and respiratory droplet types of transmissions. And here's where uh, it's gonna get really fun. So essentially, we're gonna share um, what we remember. I'm gonna put folks into breakout groups. And what I will ask you to do is work with your group based on what you remember from reading chapter five and also from our discussion yesterday, you're gonna focus on one of these ways of transmission. So group one is going to be focusing on direct transmission, group two on indirect, and then we have group three is going to be focusing on airborne and respiratory droplet transmission. So I'm going to share here in the chat a link to um, this shared collaborative document. So I want to make sure that everybody can access the link. So it's there in the chat for you. Uh, just give me a thumbs up or a little fire sign if you have signed in. Great. We've got perfect. And I can see the beauty of the collaborative document too is that I can see how many people have signed in here? I can start to see all of your little, <laughs> your little kind of avatars here. Um, so wonderful. So we're gonna do this for about 12 minutes. And um, while you're working, I'm gonna have the collaborative document open so I can sort of check on each group's progress. If I sense that a group is struggling, I'm likely gonna pop into that room and just um, provide some assistance. So uh, you can see here, this is where you're gonna be typing. So if you're in group one, um, this is your box, right? You can actually type in here. If I was in group one and I'm talking about direct transmission, I might type in and shake. There you go. That's one example. I'm not going to give any more away though. Um, group two, same thing. And I can see some of your initials here. That's wonderful. Um, so in your groups, make sure you have one person who's the note taker. We don't need everybody writing in one group at the same time. So one note taker, and then also one person in your group who's going to be sharing what you've come up with with the, with the broader class in about 12 minutes. All right, everybody, we are back. Thank you so much. It's always lots of fun for me to be on the outside seeing what each group is contributing here. As I talked into some groups, you were using the textbook for support and that's totally fine. That's what it's there for. Um, so we have some really great responses here. Why don't we go through group by group um, and we'll, uh, the person who was the elected, the spokesperson, why don't we start with group three? Who's our spokesperson for group three? 